Welcome to the Walton Hi. Today we are going to be talking about trigonometric functions. These are often referred to as just trig functions. So if you hear that, that is what it's going to be. So the first trig function we are going to be talking about be sine. So sine um, can often be thought, all of these trig functions can be thought of in terms of a triangle, where theta is the angle um, as signified in this right triangle. So each of the sides are going to have a different name. So we have opposite, so that's the side opposite of the angle. We have adjacent, so that's the leg of the right triangle that is next to the angle. And then there's the hypotenuse, which is um, as it normally is in a right triangle. So if we're talking about what's sine of theta, in a triangle, this is going to be the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse. Now this ratio is always the same in any right triangle with the same angle theta. Um, and so these ratios are going to give us these nice properties, and so this is what these trig functions measure. So sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, a different ratio, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, another one is going to be tangent, and this one is going to be opposite over adjacent. Um, you might have heard the acronym SOCATOA. So SOCATOA is going to be an acronym or a mnemonic device in order to help remember these ratios. So it goes SOCATOA. So S for sine and then OH, that stands for opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, C-A-H, C stands for cosine, and then the A-H says it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And then toa, tangent, tells us it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So these are some helpful acronyms to be able to use to remember what sine, cosine, and tangent are going to be. Cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over uh, opposite, so this is one over sine. So hypotenuse over opposite is cosecant. Secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, or 1 over cosine. And then cotangent is going to be um, adjacent over opposite, or 1 over tangent. So these are going to be used um, for a right triangle, assuming that the angle theta is in the first quadrant. So these are the four different quadrants. So the first quadrant are where both x and y are positive. The second quadrant is as uh, shown in the diagram, x is negative but y is positive. Quadrant 3 is where both x and y are negative, and quadrant 4 is where x is positive but y is negative. So if we have these values in different quadrants, um, if you're trying to determine the values of the different trig functions, um, just let the two legs of the right angle either be negative or positive. Even though on a normal triangle each side is always positive, if you let the leg be negative or positive, depending on what quadrant it is, you're going to get the correct ratios um, given previously. So if this is our triangle, and you have figured out the angle theta inside the triangle, that'll give you the different positive or negative values that you would need. Um, however, remember that theta is always measuring the angle going upwards or going uh, counterclockwise or anticlockwise. Um, from the positive x-axis. So here, the angle theta that would be right here, that is not going to be the theta that is given, um, like if you're asked to find cosine of this angle here, so that entire angle part, that is going to be the theta, whereas this part here is just to get the values of those different uh, pieces. Um, that might be a little bit complicated, but we'll talk about how we can figure those out momentarily. Um, so, as I was mentioning earlier, um, a useful property of functions is that all of them can be represented in terms of just sine and cosine. So, if you can know the sine and cosine values, then you can know that tangent is going to be sine over cosine, uh, cotangent is going to be cosine over sine, secant is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. Um, and so a useful thing to know is if we know the sine and cosine values, then we can know everything else. So this is a diagram of the unit circle. Um, and so um, on the inside most part, we have the angles measured in degrees. 
Um, and then the next one, still inside the circle, is going to be the angle measured in radians. Uh, for most calculus classes, you're going to be doing things primarily in radians, so get used to the idea of angles measured in terms of pi. Um, you can think of the radian measure. That is the length of the curve going from the point 1, 0 to that specific angle on a circle of radius 1. Because if a circle has radius 1, then the diameter is 2, so the circumference of the circle would be 2 pi, which is the number of, or the amount of radians for a full circle. Um, and so that's where those values come from. So one circle is 2 pi, and so that's how you can figure out those different angles. And so if we look to see all of these different coordinates of these different points, we see that the, these are very uh, nice uh, compared to a lot of the other values that we could have had on those uh, circles. So for example, for 30 degrees, or pi over 6 radians, we see the point um, that is going to be there is going to be root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So that tells us that the x coordinate is root 3 over 2 and the y coordinate is 1 half. Since the uh, hypotenuse is 1, and since sine is um, our opposite over hypotenuse, or our y value over hypotenuse, we find that the sine value is always going to be 1 half for an angle of 30 degrees or an angle of pi 6 radians. Um, and then the cosine is going to be the x value of that point. So cosine of 30 degrees or cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So these coordinates give us the cosine comma sine values. Um, some ways that you might be able to remember that is that um, x comes before y alphabetically, and so does cosine that comes before sine alphabetically. So it'll always be cosine sine. Um, some other useful things are if you look at the values as we go down this circle, it goes 1, root 2, root 3, all over 2's, so you can remember it goes 1, 2, 3, and then the other direction goes 1, 2, 3 in the opposite direction. That is another useful way to be able to help remember what are those different values. Um, and so together is a very quick and brief overview of all the different trig functions. Um, in my next video, I will be going over some problems involving these, and so we'll be able to work through a few more of these as well. So please like and subscribe so that you can be able to see that video when it comes out. I hope you all have a great day, and I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your